Barbra Streisand.
Good afternoon and welcome to the Subway AUS Women's Soccer Championships in Sydney, Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. It is a matchup here between the St. FX X Women and the Acadia Axe Women. My name is Rachel Lalani and I've got your call for today's game and joining me on color commentary is Justin McLellan. What a road it has been for these two teams. So let's start with the St. FX X Women. Right, so the X Women have had quite a thrilling weekend thus far. In their quarterfinal match against the uh, UNB Varsity Reds on Thursday evening, the X Women really relied on their composure and ability to move the ball, um, uh, moving the ball very well and dictating much of the play. Um, and they relied on Margot Frazier, her goal in the second half, to give them that 2 1 victory in the quarterfinal. And they continued their dramatic fashion on, on Friday night when they took on the number one seeded and host team, CBU Capers. Um, and as we saw, um, their ability to, to really limit CBU's chances, their ability to rely on their tactical prowess and play there in that quarter, in that semifinal match, pardon, was enough to bring them um, to, to extra minutes and um, allowed them to um, bring it to penalties. And as we saw, it was Chloe Brennan with the, with the fifth and final goal for the X women to, to bring them over um, the CBU Capers in that match. Now, talking about the Acadia X women, they've had a road themselves, so let's talk about their journey here too. Right, so the Axe women have had arguably an even more uh, thrilling weekend winning in dramatic fashion thus far. So in their quarterfinal match on Thursday evening against the 6 seed Dalhousie Tigers, um, the Axe women um, re relied on uh, Candace Conrad in the 96th minute for them with a header goal um, to propel, propel them to a 2-1 victory um, over the Tigers in that match. Um, and as we saw on Friday evening, this time it was um, defender Nicole Wombolt who was the hero, scoring in both the 88th and 93rd minutes for the Axe women. Um, so in that thriller, again, we saw an extra time win and uh, a, a very thrilling 2-1 win for them. So as we as we can suspect, the Acadia Axe women will want nothing more than to uh, return home to Wolfville when they uh, host the U Sports Championships uh, with an AUS Championship under their belt. Well, this is going to be an exciting matchup, but first we want to send it down to the third member of our on-air party. Take it away, Jordan Ellis. Thanks, Raisa. Yes, it's a great game here for St. FX. Coach Graham Kennedy is back on the bench, and we talked just talked about it a second ago. Margot Frazier has been rewarded. She will be starting today after that big goal in the quarterfinal on Thursday night. And an update on Mercy Miles. She will be a game-time decision. She's a first year from Ghana, and she's looking to get in the game. Hopefully she can, as she was a big factor, and she was player of the game on Thursday night as well. And for the Acadia, I mean, what can you talk about? Megan Earl. She will be in the lineup, fifth-year starter, and coach is going with a veteran presence. All starters are third, fourth, or fifth years, as they already have their ticket punched for the U Sports Championships next week. Both teams, however, the a Subway AUS Championship is on the line, and opening kickoff is just around the corner. doesn't like me back. Like his friend. Good idea. Can you forge my mom's signature? I can, but will I? No. The Atlantic University Sport Basketball season is here, and AUS brings you Saturday Night Basketball on Fine TV. Tune in to catch the games of the week every Saturday night at 6 and 8. Watch Saturday nights all season long on 5 TV, Channel 1, and 401. Follow your teams as they battle it out on the road to the championships. Check out AUSHoops.ca for championship details. AUS Basketball is presented by Subway, the official fuel of Atlantic University Sport. These are Subway's roast beef and turkey breast subs. And these... Wait for it. Our Subway's roast beef and turkey breast subs with no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. It's 
a big change you can feel good about. And it's how we're leading our commitment to feel good, taste good food. Make all your sad wishes come true at Subway. Hello and welcome back to the Subway AUS Women's Soccer Championships. My name is Renee Solani and you're with Justin McLellan and we have a weather report for you. Mainly cloudy here, 16 degrees out, so a, a nice day to play soccer. Six kilometer wind, so not too much of a wind factor here, but there is still a little chill in the air. You can see some of the players have their gloves and headbands on. Justin, we're all nice and warm here in the press box, so we can't complain, but really looking forward to this match. Yeah, nothing much better than a championship Sunday here, and uh, we're getting set to go. Should be a very exciting match, and uh, the X women and X women have a, a right, lot to lot to play for this afternoon. And, and on your screen there is the referee, your head referee, Marie Soleil Bowden. Assistant referees are Shauna Poirier and Amanda Valentini. And finally, your fourth is Scott Maybe. So they are going to get all geared up here and ready to go. And this championship Sunday final is just about to start here. And just a reminder, folks, make sure to stay tuned after the game as there will be an award ceremony and you will see one of these teams with a banner and the AUS hat that all athletes in the AUS are getting out to get. That's, you know, the renowned baseball cap and both of us have some in our collection so that's pretty cool and so make sure to stay tuned at the end of the broadcast there will be the ceremony both teams taking the field here and it looks like Acadia is going to start with the kickoff. And on the ball there is Noseworthy Smith and Earl. And here we go. Pass back to Ross, and Ross is going to drive it up to the left side of her field. She's going to find Howell. And that ball out of bounds. Quick throw in for X. There is Wilkie. Pressure coming in from Earl. Wilkie looking to send it down, but it is going to go off the shin of Earl. Throw in from X. Pass to Brooke. X on the ball. And there is Brooke. Brooke with the pass back. Once again, she's going to go back and find Parks. And X just looking to stay in control here with a quick passing game. Finding the ball there now is Amy Rowe. Rowe to Brooke. Brooke with a quick pass to Gibbons. Now she's going to send it up to Ellis. Gibbons to Fraser. Fraser to Brennan. Brennan to Fraser. Back to Brennan. Brennan to Gibbons. And Fraser's going to go with a shot or a cross, and it is going to be blocked there by Nickerson for Acadia. Once again, Nickerson looking to drive it out. And that's some good positive stuff from the X-Women to start here, moving the ball very well on the ground and a good chance for them with Margot Frazier's effort to swing that one into the box there for the X-Women. Brennan with the throw in for X to Fraser. She's looking to turn that, but Madison Kelly with the pressure and that is going to be an Acadia throw in. So Madison Kelly, another player for the X-Women, inserted into the starting lineup for today's championship match. Conrad with a long throw. She's going to find Earl. And there is a great job there by Kelly driving it to the net into the hands of your goalie for St. FX, Nicole McDonald. Running the ball is Wilkie. Stolen away by Noseworthy Smith. She's going to send it out to Ross. 
Ross passing it back to LeBlanc. Pride to Kelly. Kelly driving it up the right side and looking to cross it, but that is going to go wide behind the net. You'd have to think Acadia is going to really rely on uh, Captain Michelle Pride in this match to really dictate the play as she did there, get it across to Madison Kelly, who, whose cross just uh, just was a bit wide and into the into the side mesh. Row on the ball for X, taking it down her left lane. Now looking to send it in the center, she's going to find Brennan. Brennan's going to send it down to Fraser. Fraser with the chase down, but there is Conrad coming in with some pressure. And chasing down that ball from St. FX is a number three, Elise Brennan, and she's going to throw the ball in for X. Brennan on the ball. And we are going to get a call from the referee there. A good play from Elise Brennan there to get past her defender. And now X has a good chance on the, the free kick here. Their first good quality chance of the match. On the ball for X is Brennan. Brennan's going to send it deep. And clearing that ball out there for Acadia is Megan Earl. Some hustle coming in from Pride, but just a turn there from Parks in the nick of time. Now Howell for Acadia. She's going to find Gemma LeBlanc. LeBlanc with the chase down, keeping it inbounds and crossing it to Earl. But first we're going to see Wilkie with some defense. Noseworthy Smith on the ball. She's looking to send it to Howell. Howell with a quick pass to LeBlanc, and LeBlanc is going to take the shot into the hands of McDonald. Drop kick. Fraser receiving it. Passed it back to Brennan. Stolen away by Kelly, and then stolen away by Brooke. Now Brooke on the ball. She's looking to drive it down for X. And she's going to find Wilkie in the back. Wilkie with some pressure from Earl. Received by Howell. Back with X. Brooke on the ball. Pass to Fraser. Brooke again here. Now to Gibbons. Gibbons is going to send it back to Rowe. Row with the pass to Brennan. Pressure coming from Kelly. She releases it to Gibbons. To Brennan. Back to Row. Row driving it long, looking to find Brennan, but it is going to be met by Acadia, leading it out of bounds. Throw in coming in here for Candace Conrad. The X women are so structurally sound defensively. We saw the X women with no other option but to try one over the top there. Good defending there from the X women. Here is Candace Conrad. With the throw in. Pride on the ball. Throw in from Earl. Received by X. Clearing that ball is Gibbons. Conrad finding a way to send it back. Noseworthy Smith. She's going to send it to Earl. Earl's going to stop the ball and try and move. A little bit of a takedown. Referee says no call. Nickerson sending it back. X grounding the ball with Gibbons. Stolen away by Kelly. Wilkie looking to slow it down, sending it to Parks. Parks back to Wilkie.
Wilkie. Sending it up to Fraser. <coughs> Fraser with the turn. And she is going to find Zip. But it is going to be sent out by Wombolt. Throw in, throw in coming in here from St. FX. That is Parks. Brennan sending it to Fraser. Kicked out by Ross. Brooke. X on the ball here with a pass back to Rowe. Earl coming in. Wilkie. Noseworthy Smith. Noseworthy Smith looking to send it up, but she's going to stop as that touch was a little bit too far for her. And this combination of uh, Kinsella, Noseworthy Smith, and Megan Earl can prove dangerous. Very talented forward players for the Axewomen. On the ball there is Ellis. Stolen away by Pride, and she's going to drive it up the center. Quick pass to Noseworthy Smith. Back to Conrad. Conrad up to Pride. Pride's find Kelly. Intercepted by Rowe. Now Ross for Acadia. And she's going to cross it to the center looking for Earl. Earl finds it with her head. X on the ball here now. There is Brennan chasing it down. Brennan looking to cross it. Zip to Fraser. Fraser's going to send it back to Zip. Now Ellis on the ball. She's going to send it wide to Parks. Quick pass there from Zip, but found by Wombolt. And it is out of bounds on X. Quick throw in from Wombolt to Howell. X on the ball here. And there is a swing from number 12. That is Chloe Brennan with a shot for X. Also like to her presenting sponsor this time, the Cape Breton Post and the Giant 101.9. Well, some exciting action here at the AUS Women's Soccer Championships. But we're going to send it down to our sideline reporter, Jordan. Tell us what's going on in the men's championships. Thanks, Raysa. Yes, the Cape Breton Capers lead the Acadia Axemen by a score of 1 to nothing, And it's 34-31 in the first half. So an early lead for Cape Breton. All right, thank you. X on the ball. X on the ball here. LeBlanc sending it back to Wombolt. Wombolt looking for Howell. Ross. Noseworthy Smith on the ball. Good patience there from Noseworthy Smith to, to move the ball to the flank. Into the hands of Keeper McDonald. McDonald with the drop kick past half. Ross sending it back to Nickerson to Wombolt. Well, folks, we are so excited you are joining us here. Like we said, it is the AUS Soccer Championship weekend. And if you can't want, you can visit bellaline.ca TV1 for the TV1 live webcast schedule and on-demand content. So you make sure you don't miss anything. You'll also get information on TV1 live events available only to Bella Alliant 5 customers in Atlanta, Canada on Channel 1 and 401. Bella Alliant 5, three amazing services, one amazing price. Thank you so much for joining us here on TV1. We are so happy to bring you the AUS Women's Soccer Championships. X on the ball. Wilkie. She's looking to send it up to Fraser. Fraser with pressure from Conrad. Fraser with the turn. 
Rebound by Brooke. Ross now to Kelly for Acadia. Ross, she's going to send it back to Conrad. To Nickerson. Out to Wombolt. Back to Wombolt. Wombolt in the center to Pride. Or rather, Earl. And she went with the one pass. There's Ellis. But it is stolen away there by Wombolt. And that is a try there for Ellis from the X Women. And a good effort there from the X Women to push forward. But the defensive line of Candace Conrad and Emily Nickerson, Nicole Wombolt have proved so, uh, so strong and steady throughout the championships. Brennan on the ball, sending it back to Zip. Zip sending it across to Row. Brennan to Brennan. Back to Brennan. She's going to look at to send it in the center, but met by Nickerson. Row. Quick pass to Ellis. Ellis looking for the turn, and she's going to try and send it wide, but it is met by Wombolt. Now Noseworthy Smith and Brooke with a battle. Wilkie. That is Parks and Howell. Parks still on the ball. Now Parks and Wombolt. Parks still on the ball, showing some resilience. But that one is going to go out of bounds on her. And it looks like Wombolt is down. It's a hard collision there and a good tackle from Nicole Wombold. She's slow to her feet here. But a good run there from Brittany Parks from the X-Women to push forward from that right defensive uh, position. And we'll get another look here on the replay. And she is still down. Like I mentioned here, again on the replay, we see that collision. She just got stuck in there and the foot of Brittany Parks really uh, seemed to take uh, Nicole Womble down to her feet, and she's getting helped off now. And you could see it in her face on that replay, just in that last second there. You could see some pain on her face. So she is getting helped off, which is not a good look for Acadia because that line, as you were saying, a really strong line of those three in the back on defense for Acadia. All right, it is an Acadia throw in here. Conrad to Nickerson. So as Wombolk is checked out there by a personnel on the Acadia bench, seems as though we have a, a substitute getting warmed up now, so we'll, we'll keep you updated on who, who comes in or the decision on Wombolt here in the remainder of the first half. Wilkie sending it wide to row. Row to Brennan. Brennan's going to find Row again. Wide to Wilkie, chasing it down. Once again, Wilkie on the ball. Out to Zip. Finding Ellis. Hustling down there is Parks. And that ball is going to go out of bounds. And a substitute in here in replace of Nicole Wombolt is number 13, Rachel Cunningham. So Cunningham has been a starter for the Axe women in, the, in their quarterfinal and semifinal matches. So she'll return to action here and provide a bit of more defensive stability in replace of Wombolt. 
There is Fraser on the ball for X. Stolen away by Acadia. And Kelly is going to drive that ball up. And a good ball there from Kelly to, to find Megan Earl on the run. And there is Earl with a shot into the hands of McDonald. And the first real test uh, there for Mac Nicole McDonald. And she did well to bring that down with her hands. Earl on the ball again. Stolen away by X. Row on the ball. Row driving it up. Quick pass to Fraser. Fraser's going to go back to Row. Now she's going to send it down the left lane. Met by Cunningham. Kadia sending it up, and Earl is going to chase that ball down. A little too much heat on that one. McDonald found it first. Wilkie. Fraser. Conrad on the ball. Back and forth action between X and the X women. Noseworthy Smith. She's going to send it up and chase it down. And now she is going to cross that ball. No one there in time to receive it. McDonald's ball. Another good run there from Kinsella Noseworthy Smith. Using her speed and ability to, uh, to elude the X defenders with her quick feet. Ellis on the ball for X. Passed back to Zip. Zip to Wilkie. Wilkie looking to find X in the middle, but it is going to go back to McDonald. Earl coming in. McDonald released to row. Row to Gibbons. And we're going to see a little push call there from the referee. Free kick for the Axe women here. And it will be taken by Katie Ross. Ross sending it forward. Looking to find Conrad. Conrad with the one touch, and that is going to go just wide for her. Katie Ross has that ability um, to deliver the ball from all areas of the field, really. She has a great, uh, a great foot, a great delivery. Well, folks, there is a lot of championship action happening, so make sure to tune in and watch Inside the AUS for a weekly look at the players, coaches, and administrators that make Atlantic University Sport the ultimate student-athlete experience. Inside the AUS is available on demand to Bell Alliant 5 customers in Atlantic Canada on Channel 1 and 401, as well as on online at bellalliant.ca slash tv1. Make sure to tune in to this upcoming episode this week. It will feature some interviews from the semifinals for AUS football and the men and women's soccer championships. X on the ball here. Now Acadia, there is Ross, and she's going to send it up. Row. Short to Brennan. Brennan's going to drive it up to Fraser. And a little bit too much of a touch there for Fraser. Yeah, Fraser's looked like she tried to bring it down there with her chest before turning, but couldn't quite get a handle on it there and collected nicely by Emma Connell. Connell with the kick past half. Pride on the ball for Acadia. Cunningham. Up to Kelly. Kelly looking to one touch to Pride, as you can hear on that beautiful parabolic mic down there. You can hear really hear what the girls are saying on the field. It was a good turn there from Kelly, but probably just wanted a, sl a slight touch on it so she could run onto it. <laughs> 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 
Arcadia with the header. Well, it sounds like we have some injury updates from our sideline reporter. Jordan, what is going on with the two teams? Thanks, Raysa. Yes, uh, for Acadia, Chelsea Wombolt, she's getting taped up right now. We're still unsure if she uh, will get back into this game. Uh, you know, she's getting some attending by the trainers, but looks like she will be okay. Her cleat's back on, so she'll probably start warming up here soon. And for the St. FX X women, Mercy Miles is out of the game. She's not getting dressed, so she will not be in the game for the X women. That's a big loss. Now back to you guys. All right, thanks so much. Good news there for Acadia with Wombolt. Just as we get that update, we have Megan Earl leaving the game in replace of uh, Annie Little. So Little will come in and provide that uh, bit of width there for the Axewomen. And seeing Megan Earl, there was one, one shot that she had there. It looks like she kind of got a little bit injured or t not quite taken down, but you could definitely see her limping and slowing down and not chasing a couple of balls. So maybe a recurring injury or something happened to her there because we just didn't see the spark we usually see from her in the last couple minutes. Yeah, exactly. Cunningham with the throw in for Acadia. Little. And Little who, who played uh, the quarterfinal and semifinal matches in that, uh, that wide position as I suspected, but she seems to be taking Earl's position at the, the top forward role. So a different look here for Annie Little and the Axe women. Howell on the ball. X's Parks. Now Wilkie. Wilkie's going to drive it up her right lane, but it is found by Conrad. And that ball's going to go out of bounds off an X player, Acadia throw in. Candace Conrad with the ball. Throwing to Howell, back to Conrad. Conrad sending it up. But this time that ball out of bounds for Acadia. Parks with the throw in to X. And that is Zip sending it up. Kadia. Ross pass back to Conrad. Conrad spreading it wide to Nickerson, but Fraser coming in. Conrad. Wilkie is going to send it back to McDonald's. Donald changing the course, sending it left now to Rowe. Back to McDonald. Wilkie. She is going to find Brennan. Brennan's going to go back to Wilkie. Rowe. Quick pass back to Rowe from Gibbons. Rowe up to Fraser. Fraser back to Rowe. This time Rowe's going to send it up. Brennan to Ellis. Ellis through the legs to X. One quick pass back from Brennan to Ellis, but it is taken away by Acadia's pride. And that ball's going to go off the chest of an X player. Acadia throw in. Cunningham with the throw in to Pride. Pride is going to send it down, but it is going to be met by the head of row. The defensive unit for the X women have also been stellar this weekend. Uh, Amy Rowe and Olivia Wilkie were so dominant in their two wins thus far, and uh, they'll be counted on to be important factors once again. Ellis on the ball for X, sent back to Wilkie now. And Wilkie is going to send it up to Ellis. Ellis with the chase down, but it is going to be met first by Nickerson, who's going to turn it around to LeBlanc. Now to Howell. Howell's going to find Noseworthy Smith. Conrad sending it up. Noseworthy Smith on the ball now for Acadia. Ross to Cunningham. Some hustle there from Fraser. Uh -huh. 
Ross. And that and ball is can, out of bounds. Sorry, and as you can see there on the screen, uh, Margot Frazier is in a bit of discomfort as she gets to her feet. <coughs> Unsure of the exact collision, but good news is that she's up and looking to walk off the apparent injury. Referee calling for the throw in, but you can definitely see that Fraser is in some pain and very much so limping right now. Quick throw into Brennan. Brennan's going to send it up. And it is going to meet Emma Connell, the goalie for Acadia. Conrad on the ball for Acadia. And she's going to send it up, but it's met by the head of Wilkie. X defending the ball. Wilkie is going to drive it long past the half. Conrad turning it around. A little collision there between Brennan and LeBlanc. Fraser on the ball. Ellis with the turn. She's going to find Brennan. Brennan is going to send it up to Zip. Good ball there from Brennan to find the Zip on the run. Conrad's going to send it out, but Parks on the ball. Once again, sending it in. And a touch there from Brennan that's going to go out of bounds. A good build up there from the X women, and on the end of it was Elise. Elise Brennan with a left-footed effort the there. Sponsors, including the Keeper and Coast and the Giant 101.9, Subway Restaurants, Vibe TV1, Budweiser, and Gatorade G-Series. Looks as though Margot Frazier will uh, remain in the match. No substitutes are, are warming up, so Frazier has walked off her injury and she's back in play. And the ball here for Acadia. Cunningham. Fraser on the ball for X. Fraser on the ball. Brennan. And Ross is going to drive out to the right to Noseworthy Smith. And that ball is going to go out of bounds. Well, you guys, it is Championship Sunday, and you know what that means. The sideline scoops on Monday. Join Bella Lyon TV One Scott Squires as he chats with Cyril Lenny on CTV's Sideline Scoop. Eat mon each Monday at 8.40 a.m. Atlantic, 9.10 a.m. Newfoundland time. Get up to date on Bella Lyon TV One's local sports coverage with Scott and Cyril. That's the sideline scoop, Mondays on CTV Morning Live Atlantic. Cunningham on the ball. Sent back to Walt, or Nickerson. Conrad for Acadia taking it to the half. Pass to Noseworthy Smith. She's going to find Howell. And that ball is going to go off of X's Parks throw in for Acadia. Here in the 32nd minute now, both teams haven't really generated a lot of quality chances, a lot of back and forth play, but again, the chances in the final third are, are slim to none for both sides. That ball is with X on the sideline. A little bit of a late call there by the referee. Throw in coming in for X. And there is Gibbons, passed back to Parks. Parks across to Brooke. Parks. And she's going to send it across to Rowe. Quick pass back to her. Brennan. Row and she's going to send it up to Fraser. Fraser with the header 
now being chased down by Chloe Brennan. And a little bit of a takedown there from Brennan on Acadia's player. So that is going to be a free kick. Coming in strong here for the free kick once again, Katie Ross. And she's going to send it up past the half to Little. Another good ball there from Katie Ross. That ball out of bounds, throw in for Acadia. Kelly with the throw into Little. Off of Brennan once again. Kelly with the throw in for Acadia. Finding Pride. Off of X once again, Acadia with the throw in. Header from Brennan out of bounds. It's a big throw in here for Acadia. Noseworthy Smith. And she's going to try and send it into the box. Little pride, and that is going to go off of X's defense. Fraser taking the ball now for X. And she's going to toe tap it outright to Parks. Parks finding Ellis. Ellis with the tap to Brennan, but some hustle coming in from Conrad and she's going to send it out of bounds. Throw in now for St. FX. Another good build up there from X, but just unable in that, on that final touch to get into the box. Just unlucky trying to, to string that, that final pass. X is throwing, finding Ellis. And Conrad is gonna send that one long and wide. Found by Wilkie first. Now Little to Noseworthy Smith. Noseworthy Smith looking to send it up to Little, but Wilkie intercepting it. Noseworthy Smith once again on the ball. This time she's gonna send it to Kelly. But Brennan is gonna take it away. Nickerson sending it past the half again. Wilkie with the header. Pride looking to ground it, but into the feet of Ellis. Stolen by Nickerson. Noseworthy Smith. Brennan on the ball for X. Sending out wide to Parks. And Parks is going to beat out two of Acadia's players. Still hustling for that ball, but Ross is going to take it away from her. Kelly on the ball, looking to turn it. Brennan. Cunningham on the right wing. She's going to send it into the center to Noseworthy Smith. Noseworthy Smith, once again looking to get it, but Brennan is going to take it away and pass it to the other Brennan. Noseworthy Smith, and she's going to try and send it up there to Little, but chased down by Keep McDonald. Another good ball there from Kinsella Noseworthy Smith, Smith trying to find Annie Little on the run there, but again, good defending from the ex-women defense. X on the ball looking to cross it. Fraser coming in. But that is going to be defended by Acadia. Still in the box. Ellis versus Conrad. And now it is cleared out by Nickerson. Little coming in against Parks. Wilkie on the ball. Sending it wide to Rowe. Rowe is going to pass it up. Gibbons to Fraser. Fraser back to Gibbons. Fraser, she's going to send it wide right to Parks, but it is intercepted there by Howell, and it will go off of her X throw in. A good idea from Fraser to switch the ball to the wing, but good anticipation from Jenna Howell, who was also inserted into the starting lineup this afternoon for the Axe women. Throw in coming in from Parks for X. Now at her feet, sending it back to Wilkie. Gibbons on the ball for X. Parks. 
looking to send it up, but Howell intercepting it. X still in control here. And there goes Little with the tap, looking to maybe chase after, but knowing it is a little bit too much heat for her to get to. McDonald drop kick. And a little takedown between X's Brennan and Ross, and Ross is going to get awarded that free kick. And even though this ball is just above the half line, you'd have to think it's dangerous as well because Katie Ross has that ability to, uh, to provide those long distance balls into the box. And she is going to drive it long. And there is Conrad coming in from the back, but just into the hands of McDonald. On the ball is Brennan. Brennan looking to send it into the center to Brennan, to Fraser. And a little bit of a mistouch there. That ball out of bounds off her toe. Acadia throw in. Here is Cunningham. There is Brennan on the ball. Passed back. Wilkie. She's going to send it up, but Nickerson's going to find it first. Pride. Sending it out to LeBlanc. LeBlanc driving it up, looking for Howell, but too much of a drive. Good idea there from Gemma LeBlanc to look to expose the X defense and, s and uh, play that one through to a running Jenna Howell, but just a bit too far. Here is Nicole McDonald, your keeper for Sane FX. With a short, quick pass to Wilkie right outside of her box. Wilkie's going to send it down the right lane of her field. That ball out of bounds off an Acadia head. Throw in coming in from Parks. Throw in from Parks. Well, folks, we are in the 40th minute, and you know what that means. We have an exciting live halftime show for you. And coming up with Jordan Ellis on the sidelines is the executive director of the AUS, Phil Curry. He has made it to, to Cape Breton for this championship Sunday final. So we're really looking forward to seeing that interview. And a good first-time ball there from Elise Brennan. Caught it on the volley and did well to try to steer that one into the box. Zip on the ball for X. Kelly with the pressure. That ball is going to go out of bounds. Throw in coming in here for Acadia. Rachel Cunningham with the throw in. And here in the 41st minute, uh, another substitution again for Acadia and looks to be Jenna Boudreau entering the game in replace of Madison Kelly. So she'll take that role as a right winger here to close up the first half. Boudreaux is running onto the field. And the throw-in is coming in here from Cunningham. She will find Boudreaux right away. Fraser's gonna seal that ball away. Sending it back to Zip. Ross is gonna clear that out. Row with the header. Brennan. Row, pressure by Little. Brennan is gonna find Brennan. And they are going to spread it out to Wilkie. Wilkie's gonna drive it down the center, looking to find someone, but that just passed both of her blue jerseys. Throw in from Cunningham. Ross sending it high. Noseworthy Smith with the tip header. Wilkie on the ball. Received by Howell. Howell to Noseworthy Smith and sending it up quickly. There is some hustle from LeBlanc. And she's gonna manage to get it off an ex-player's shin. 
throw in for Acadia. Conrad with the throw in. She's looking for a little, but it is met by the head of Parks. Brooke on the ball for X. Chased down by Parks and Howell. Parks getting there first. With a quick pass to Ellis. Back to Parks. Gibbons on the ball. Parks. And she's going to send it long. Looking for Fraser, but Nickerson with defense. Ellis on the ball now. And Ellis is going to go for a long shot. And that is going to score. Ellis with the goal for X right before the half. 1-0. And what a goal it was there from second-year player Kelsey Ellis out of Ottawa, Ontario. She's had a, quite a few chances, uh, both in the quarterfinal and semifinal matches. Played brilliantly so far in the, in the weekend. So we'll have another look here. and She did well to lop that one over the top and picked out that, that left corner over the, over the head of Emma Connell there. And another great finish there. Makes it one nothing for X right before the half. Couldn't have picked a better time there for, for them to take control of the match here. one nothing lead. Alice on the ball here. Passed back to Gibbons. Gibbons sending it up to Ellis. Ellis with a quick pass to Zip. Brennan on the ball, beating out Nickerson. Brennan looking for a shot now, and that is going to go into the hands of Emma Connell. So X's build-up play has been there and prominent all, all, uh, all match so far, but they're finally getting chances here towards the goal, and Good to see them directing shots and testing Emma Connell here. Fraser on the ball for X. She's going to go wide to Brennan. Brennan to zip. Back to row. Row slowing it down. Driving it up to Fraser. Fraser with the ball for X. Looking for Ellis, but that is going to be some defense from Jenna LeBlanc. Ball out of bounds off of her. X throw in. Brennan finding Fraser. Sent outside to Brennan. Brennan looking to send it across, but it will go off. An X woman's defense. Well, a, a good defending there from Jenna Boudreau to steer that one wide, but results in a final good chance here for the X women. Likely their last one before halftime. There is a corner kick coming in. And a header right out. <coughs> And that ball into the hands of Connell once again. <coughs> Connell with the drop kick to half. And a header there from Brennan. Ross is going to send it wide to Candace Conrad, who's going to drive it up past the half. Met by the head of Brooke. On the ball now is Brennan sending it back to Wilkie. Wilkie looking to take her time and drive it down the right lane and that is gonna hit the top head of Ross. And right as that happens, we are gonna get the referee's whistle. This half is over, right, it uh, is one up 1-0. What a goal that was. Yeah, a great finish there from Kelsey Ellis, the second year player. She, uh, she capitalized on what were uh, Throughout the weekend, she had a few chances and uh, definitely uh, finished that one in style and put put her ex women ahead one nothing here just just before the halftime whistle. Well, folks, our reporter Jordan Ellis is going to go find one of the coaches, but he'll come back right after this break.
What if he doesn't like me back? Like his friend. Good idea. Can you forge my mom's signature? I can, but will I? No. The Atlantic University Sport Basketball season is here, and AUS brings you Saturday Night Basketball on Fine TV. Tune in to catch the games of the week every Saturday night at 6 and 8. Watch Saturday nights all season long on Fine TV, Channel 1, and 401. Follow your teams as they battle it out on the road to the championships. Check out AUSHoops.ca for championship details. AUS Basketball is presented by Subway, the official fuel of Atlantic University Sport. These are Subway's roast beef and turkey breast subs. And these... Wait for it. Our Subway's roast beef and turkey breast subs with no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. It's a big change you can feel good about. And it's how we're leading our commitment to feel good, taste good food. Make all your sand wishes come true at Subway. Welcome back to Sydney Cape Breton for the championships. It looks like Jordan Ellis has head coach Graham Kennedy from St. Effects down on the sidelines. Jordan, take it away. Thanks, Raisa. Yes, Coach Graham Kennedy, welcome back, of course. Uh, you were with the ex-men uh, soccer team there in Fredericton. But uh, big goal there by Kelsey Ellis right before the half. Yeah, that's an opportune time to score right before the halftime. You know, you have your, have your, your halftime talk ready to go and, and, and thinking about the second half and what you're going to do. And then, you know, that's, that's a timely goal. Uh, puts them on the back foot so it's good so if you if you were still scoreless what was your halftime speech keep doing what we're doing uh, I like the way we're playing uh, we haven't given much um, we've had our opportunities so you know it's gonna be a tight game all the way through so I would just say keep doing what we're doing all right well thank you very much best all of luck right. in the second half thank you head coach of the St. FX X women Graham Kennedy will be back right after this break the Atlantic University sport basketball season is here and AUS brings you Saturday night basketball on Fine TV. Tune in to catch the games of the week every Saturday night at 6 and 8. Watch Saturday nights all season long on Fine TV, Channel 1 and 401. Follow your teams as they battle it out on the road to the championships. Check out AUSHoops.ca for championship details. AUS Basketball is presented by Subway, the official fuel of Atlantic University Sport. Sweat. It says I was here. I worked here. It says I only have so much to give before I have to take. What I lose, I want to get back. Sweat says I earned this. Gatorade, created to help replace what you sweat out. If you like this, you'll like this too. Introducing Budweiser Prohibition Brew. The first non-alcoholic beer that actually tastes like beer. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Oh boy. Thank you. Thank you. You make me feel so young. Think young. Pass you it on. You make me feel so spring is spring. These are Subway's roast beef and turkey breast subs. And these, wait for it, are Subway's roast beef and turkey breast subs with no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. It's a big change you can feel good about. And it's how we're leading our commitment to feel good, taste good food. Make all your sand wishes come true at Subway. And welcome back to the Subway AUS Women's Soccer Championships in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, where Santa Fe holds a 1-0 lead over the Acadia Axemen. And joining me now, down on sideline, is Executive Director of the Atlantic University Sport, Phil Curry. Thank you, Phil, for taking some time out in your busy travel days. Pleasure, Jordan. Thanks for having me. So it's an exciting weekend here in, in AUS. Of course, the Women's Soccer Championships here in Cape Breton, the Men's Soccer Championships ha happening in Fredericton. I mean, and of course, uh, St. FX is going for gold at the U Sports Championships and women's rugby as well. Yeah, you know, just an exciting weekend of uh, championship, uh, champ championship games and uh, events, and you know, it's fantastic. And you know, I think X has a real good shot at the rugby ch national championship for sure. And uh, 
That's anybody knows what's going to happen. You know who knows what's going to happen these two games uh, in soccer here in the next couple hours or hour and a half, I guess. And you've been doing that this now for 17 plus years, almost 18 yeah. years. What's the, what's it's been like being the executive director for the AUS? Yeah, you, know, you got to pinch yourself sometime, really, and you get to work with these uh, student athletes, uh, just incredible people. Uh, you know, our our group of ads over the years have always been uh, extremely supportive and uh, and really care about student athletes, and I think that's really important as well. And, you know, I'm fortunate to, to be in this position and have for, for now almost 18 <laughs> years. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a passion, and uh, you got to believe in what you're doing and that you can move the bar, and I think we have uh, collectively uh, in 18 years. And we have, you know, still have a way to go. And, and the good thing is is that, you know, we never get complacent. We keep working on it and, uh, and all for student-athletes. And speaking of uh, the AUS, is there anything down in the future that you would like to see in the next two or three years, maybe expansion or in certain sports? Well, you know, I mean, uh, we've always uh, had a desire to expand football. Uh, you know, we're, we're, when we get the opportunity to, you know, uh, pitch a president or two, we, we, do, we do that. So, I mean, we like to see that down, down the road for sure, as well as, you know, when you look at, uh, when you look at women's rugby, you'd like to see some some uh, some more growth in that and what have you. I mean, uh, it's amazing what's what's gone on with with Acadia and, and and UPEI in the last couple of years, which is fantastic. And you know, that's the kind of development and growth that we need. So uh, you know, a little more of that and keep working on it and stay focused. I guess is the big thing. And now with CIS being rebranded to U Sports, has how is that going to help you uh, in the AUS? Well, I think that anytime we can get a unifying brand, and I think when you look at U Sport, uh, even in terms of our uh, our French colleagues, you know, in uh, in Quebec, U uh, Sport is uh, is uh, bilingual, and I think that's a great thing. Uh, you know, we I, I sit on a, a now a, we've changed the governments uh, of CIS, and uh, all the athletic director, or excuse me, uh, executive directors across the country now sit on a thing called the Management Advisory Council. So we're closer to the fire on the uh, national side, and I think that's really good as well. So. Uh, you know, all that uh, is just, again, good for, uh, for the people we work for, and that's student athletes. All right, well, thank you very much for joining me, and uh, it's a great second half coming up. Uh, thank you, and looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. All right, Executive Director Phil Curry of the Atlantic University Sport, and we'll be back right after the break.
Welcome back to the Subway AUS Women's Soccer Championships. Check out those fans in the stands. There are some X fans that are very happy, and that is because X is leading Acadia 1-0 here. Well, folks, we have to tell you about some very important people in the AUS, some of the players of the week. So first we have the Female Athlete of the Week, Colleen Wilson from Dalhousie's Women's Cross Country. Next, we have the Male Athlete of the Week, Calvin DeWolf, and he is St. FX Men's Cross Country from Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. And your Offensive Player of the Week, Ty Vaughn Cook from St. FX. They, he is the QB for St. FX, and they are hosting the Loney Bowl Championships on Saturday, November 12th. And finally, your Defensive Player of the Week, Adam Melanson from Acadia. And he is a defensive lineman from Kentville, Nova Scotia. So congratulations to all of those AUS players and uh, female and male athletes of the week. All right, Justin, looks like the teams are coming out here now. And, you know, a great half there. We've got a score on the board. But, you know, some resilience shown from Acadia's defense as well. What do you think of Acadia's play so far? Yeah, Acadia did well to move the ball. Um, they used Kinsella, Noseworthy, Smith once again in the middle of the field to move the ball. Michelle Pry did well, um, as well as Katie Ross to lift those balls over the top. And um, Acadia's only struggle now is getting shots directed towards the goal. And as we see, they, uh, we have another defensive affair upon us here from both sides. Both defensive uh, units are, are working really, really well and limiting each other's opportunities. So. Um, both teams are. We'll, we'll be looking here in the second half to generate some more scoring opportunities to, to, to get the especially Acadia to get the to get on the board and equalize here. Now we've seen some injuries. Obviously, Mercy Miles is not coming back into this game, and that has been confirmed. We did see Fraser go down, and you know she's obviously been a big player for uh, the team this year. Um, what do you think about Saint FX's offense right now? Right, so in the same way as that Acadia generated opportunities, especially towards the end of the half there, we saw X generate some great chances, and uh, Kelsey Ellis was, was fortunate to, to put one in there for her squad with a great strike there in the 44th minute. But uh, the build-up is, is great from the X women, and uh, they're looking forward here to build upon that, that success late in the half here in the, the next 45 minutes. And what a storyline it is. Obviously, we are here at Cape Breton University, and the Capers were beat out uh, in the semifinals on Friday. And same thing on the men's side. You know, the UNB guys were the returning champions who were hosting, um, happened to get beat out in the semifinals as well. So what do you think about having these two teams here in the finals? Right, it's a great story in that uh, both teams here had to play that quarterfinal match. So the one and two seeds were knocked out in their semifinals. So... Uh, a great story on both sides, and uh, like I like I mentioned in the pregame, it'd be great for Acadia to uh, to go into their U uh, Sports Championship with with their own AUS title behind them as they're hosting. But uh, what a story it is for the X women to come in here and uh, as the uh, as the number four seed and, and come in here and with a great performance in three matches. So uh, a great success story on both sides. But uh, looking forward to the next 45 minutes and see who uh, is crowned the AUS champions. Absolutely, and there on your screen is St. FX, and we did hear from Graham Kennedy, uh, the head coach of the X Women, and it's you know great that he is here today, and it looks like he's just walking back onto the field now. Well, both teams looking to take the field here, and just a reminder, your referees, head referee Marisa Leigh Bowden, assistant referees Shauna Poirier and Amanda Valentini, and finally your fourth is Scott Maybe. St. FX looking for the kickoff here in 1-0, second half, just about to begin here on TV1. Thank you so much for joining us. We are very happy to have your call here for this game. So just looking at the squads here uh, at the, uh, the start of the second half, it looks as if uh, Scoville has, uh, has entered the game for the Axe women. Both teams getting set to go here in a very important 45 minutes here in the AUS final. Well, we've had three overtime games, Justin, so we're not ruling anything out here. This is the championship final, so no matter how long it takes, we want to see one of these teams win this game. And, you know, right now I think it's really even. It may be 1-0 here, but both these teams are showing some great play and both are very deserving of a win. All right, both teams showing a lot of promise in those 45 minutes, moving the ball very well, and that's what you'd expect of a, 
of an AUS final. Both teams very quality stuff and should be an exciting finish to this match for sure. Throw in coming in here for Acadia. This is number 22, Jenna Howell. She's going to find Ross Howell looking to send it up to the center. And a try there from the new legs of Scoville with the header. And that ball is going to be shot out of bounds by St. FX's defense. Throw in once again for Acadia. Ross to Howell. But stolen away by Brennan. Now Wilkie on the back line for X. And she's going to drive it from the ground to Fraser. Fraser's going to send it back to her. And no sign of Megan Earl yet. She went uh, went down with an apparent injury in, in the first half. A bit of discomfort from her. So no sign yet from her. We'll, uh, we'll be eager to see if she returns to the match here for the Axe women. Candice Conrad once again with a throw in for the Axe women. Out of bounds off of X, Conrad again. Slowly inching their way down the field. And she is going to find Noseworthy Smith. X on the ball and they are going to clear it out. Finding Fraser. But some pressure from Nickerson playing up pretty high on defense there for Acadia. And there is Boudreaux. And Boudreaux is going to drive that ball into the hands of McDonald. And a good effort there from Boudreaux to start the half here, testing Nicole McDonald from the X-Women. It's what you want to see in the early minutes to generate a few chances to get your, get your team going. Kate and X with the battle, but winning it there is LeBlanc. Passed back to Conrad. Now to Howell. Finding Ross in the middle. She's going to send it wide to Cunningham. Cunningham with the low drive, looking for Scoville, but it is found by Fraser. Ellis with the one pass to Fraser, taken away by Cunningham, and passed back to her goalie, Emma Connell. Nickerson, Cunningham, now Pride running the ball down, intercepted by Brennan, Gibbons on the ball, Brennan, she's going to send it back to Wilkie who is going to drive it forward and with some hustle there is Ellis but it will go into the hands of Connell Connell with the drop kick and there is a battle between Ellis and Conrad Conrad's finding it to Howell's foot Howell now driving it up down the left side of her field. And it is going to go out of bounds off of her X throw in. And that throw in finding Ellis. And that ball once again off of Conrad, Ellis's ball. X with the throw in here. Parks finding Fraser and it looks to see that uh, Fraser has a little tape on her left knee there so maybe that is from the injury in the first half yeah she likely got some treatment at the uh, the halftime break and she looks as though she's ready to go here in the second half Katie Ross on the ball sending it long and wide to Boudreau Boudreau looking for the one touch to Pride Pride is going to recover it to Cunningham. And now she is going to send it down long. Back to Ross. And Ross is going to go for the long drive, and it will go into the hands of McDonald. Another good build up there from Acadia. Katie Ross tried to loop that one over the top. It seemed to know it was really Smith or Scoville, but a bit too far and into the hands of Nicole McDonald. And 
And there is Acadia. Good now. play there from Ellis to find Zip. Ellis on the ball now. Back to Zip. Referee call here. Elise Brennan called just offside there. Time to run a bit too, left a bit too early there, but good run from her to get forward there and test the Acadia defense. Katie Ross is going to go with a short pass on that free kick to Cunningham. Now it's going to go back to Ross, and now she's going to drive it up. And Noseworthy Smith looking to come in, but Wilkie with the first touch. Howell there to get it. Gemma LeBlanc passing to Noseworthy Smith. But X is going to take that ball away, and that is in the form of Brooke. Brennan to Gibbons. Sent back to Rowe. Rowe out wide to Brennan. Back to Rowe. Brooks. Gibbons on the ball here for X. Sending it out to Zip. And there is Wilkie sending it to Fraser in the center. And a good play there from Kelsey Ellis on the back heel to find Margot Frazier, but Emily Nickerson, who's been strong all weekend, was there once again. Brennan on the ball for X. She's going to send it back to Parks. Katia putting some pressure on here. Row on the ball for X. Giving it to Gibbons. Gibbons going to send it back to Row. Finding Brennan up high. Back once again to Row. Gibbons. <coughs> Wilkie. And she's going to drive it past Ross and send it up. Parks on the ball here now. Back to Ellis. And that is going to go out of bounds off of Acadia. St. FX throw in. Another good build up there from the X women and their wing backs. Um, have had the ability thus far in the match. Elise Brennan and uh, Brittany Parks have had the ability to push forward and really test the uh, X women defenders. And there is a shot from X, and that is Brennan with the shot, but Connell there to save it. And once again, there's Elise Brennan springing forward and testing Emma Connell there with the deflection. X on the ball, and they're going to three, turn it. Seven, three, received by Conrad. Seven, five, one, Ellis zero, putting some pressure onto her, and that ball is just going to go out of bounds on them. Three, X seven, throw in. Three, seven, five, one, zero. That is your ticket. Brittany Parks Emily with the throw in here for X. Three, seven, three, seven, five, one, She's going to find Ellis. Ellis looking to pass back to her. But the foot of number six, LeBlanc, on the ball for Acadia. But it will sail out of bounds. Throw in coming in here from Wilkie for X. LeBlanc sending it back to Nickerson. Nickerson now driving it up the center. But Brennan on the ball for X, sending it to, to Brennan. And a header from Cunningham. Brennan on the ball, Pride. Spreading it wide to zip, back to Brennan. Brennan looking to go in the center. 
And she's going to take that shot, Connell, with the save. It was well done there from Claire Gibbons to settle the ball in the middle and a good effort there from Chloe Brennan. Again, the hero for, uh, for her team in the semifinal with on, on the fifth and final penalty to, to spring her team here for the final. Little take down there, ref doesn't like it, so that is gonna be a free kick for Acadia. And of course, lining up for that free kick is power swinger Katie Ross. Ross with the free kick and she's gonna drive it into the box, but a little bit too much heat on that one. Not enough time for her strikers to get to it. Ellis passing it to Parks and Wilkie on the ball. Noseworthy Smith coming in, getting a touch. Howell on the ball for Acadia, looking to find Noseworthy Smith. But it will go into the feet of the keep. Donald. And that ball is out of bounds. Well, it sounds like we have an update on Megan Earl. So, uh, Jordan Ellis, let us know what's going on with her. Thanks, Teresa. Yes, I just spoke with assistant for uh, Acadia. He just said Megan Earl is healthy. They're looking for a different look up front. Try All right, just cutting out a little bit there, but it sounds like you said that uh, she is healthy and they're looking for a different look, so thank you so much for that update. That ball out of bounds there. Throw in coming in from X here. There is Parks. And some hustle from Pride coming in there. She is back on her feet, Noseworthy Smith. Beating out Wilkie, and she's going to look for a chance, but there is some defense from X and not letting her take that shot. Zip. Passing it to Parks. Parks back to Wilkie. Wilkie is going to spread it out to Rowe. Rowe is going to send it up to Brennan. Back to Rowe. And a header there from Boudreaux. Brennan sending it to Ellis. And Nickerson is going to clear that ball out. Rowe. Gibbons. Conrad coming from the back there. LeBlanc on the ball for Acadia. Sending it to Ross. Ross with a quick pass turn to Cunningham. And there is Boudreaux. Sending it down the line and Scoville with the hustle for Acadia looking to cross it, but it is going to go off of her. Looking like she was trying to sell it off of Roe there, but the referee is going to award that one to the goalie. Another good build up there for Acadia, but Scoville just a bit unlucky there and uh, looked like she tried to take it off the ex defender's foot, but before it went out, it deflected off her foot and. Nicole McDonald, the excellent one, will look to push forward up the field now. Ellis on the ball for X. Rowe looking to send it. And there is Pride looking to get it, but Brennan with some resilience. And a good job there from Acadia clearing that ball out with a firing hot Brennan at the heels of the ball. That ball off of Boudreaux, throw in coming again here from X. CBU men's soccer update. Game was 1 1. Just scored another goal for CBU. Assisted by number two, Daniel Pritchard. Scored by number six. And that is Boudreaux Stormy. clearing it out. Up two to one for the and that ball is going to go off of Acadia's LeBlanc. X on the ball, Wilkie. Thank you. Parks. Brendan with a quick pass to Fraser. Fraser finding zip. 
And here is a try there from Ellis. But good challenge from Connell coming out to grab that ball. A good ball in the box there from Olivia Zip, really testing Acadia here and good defensive play once again. And Emma Connell is there to, to save the day. Noseworthy Smith on the ball here for Acadia now. But that ball is gonna go out of bounds. Throw in coming in here for X. Parks with a short throw. Now passing it to Gibbons. Gibbons is gonna go back to Rowe. Rowe finding Brennan on the wing. Rowe. Gibbons. Gibbons is going to send it up the center. Fraser looking to get a touch on that. But Scoville's going to look to battle for Acadia. Rowe again. Ross coming in for a challenge, but that ball headed back past the half for X. Now LeBlanc on the ball. Fraser. Ellis. Brooke sending it back to Rowe. Some great challenging there from Noseworthy Smith and she has the ball now. Good tackle there from Amy Rowe to get back the ball, but on the run now. There's Ross. Ross is gonna try and take a shot on that one and that is gonna go into the hands of McDonald. Good effort there from Acadia. It'll be important for them to keep testing Nicole McDonald here if they want to equalize the game. X driving the ball up their lane. Fraser receiving it. But Nickers or Cunningham right on the ball. Now Nickerson. Header from Rowe, and that is going to be a header out of bounds. Throw-in coming in here from Acadia's Katie Ross to Boudreaux. Brennan keeping the ball in the corner. That ball tapped out by Boudreaux. Throw-in coming in here for X. Fraser on the ball. And that ball out of bounds once again from Acadia. Throw in coming in for X. And a snipe there from X. Coming in there is Pride. Pride looking for an opportunity. Noseworthy Smith. Noseworthy Smith taking the shot and it is going to go off the hands of McDonald and hit the crossbar. What a great play there from Michelle Pride, charging forward and found Kinsella knows where Lee Smith, who did well to get a shot for herself and a great effort there. But Nicole McDonald did enough to get that one to hit the bar. Conrad with the throw in. Another throw in coming in here for Acadia. All right, well, Jordan, why don't you give us a score update from the Subway AUS Men's Soccer Championships? Thanks, Raisa. Yes, uh, Acadia tied it up in the 52nd minute. It's goal uh, from Andrew Snyder. However, answering right back with a second goal of the game for the Capers was Stuart Heath. Two goals for Cape Breton. They lead over Acadia by a score of 2-1. to one. Thank you so much. And a shot there, chance from Ellis, and a good job from Connell on that ball. And a great ball forward there from the X-Women, finding a running Kelsey Ellis, the goal scorer here for the, for the X-Women. But a good save from Connell. Corner kick coming in from X here. Oh, 
on the ball here. It's Brennan. Brennan is looking to get it in the box and a header coming in there from Rowe, but that is just going to be wide. Good delivery there from Chloe Brennan. Good effort there from Max. <coughs> Chances are starting to pile up here in the 65th minute of action. On the ball here is Acadia's goalie, Emma Connell. Header from Ross and Pride. But Wilkie right there to receive that ball. It will go out of bounds off of her and we are gonna see a throw in coming in here from Cunningham. Cunningham finding Boudreaux. Boudreaux back to her and Cunningham's gonna drive that ball long. LeBlanc settling that ball. Ross sending it back to Nickerson. Nickerson wide to Conrad. Conrad to Nickerson. Nickerson out wide to Cunningham. Noseworthy Smith finding Ross. And it is going to go off the foot of X's Brennan. Ross with the throw in. And as you can see, a sub substitute coming in now for the X woman. Number 11, Alex Goss. And she'll come in the game in her place of in her place of number 23, Amy Rowe. Knows where they Smith looking to get that ball, but Brennan is going to find it first. Ross stopping that drive. Throw in coming here from X. Zip sending that ball long. Received by Cunningham. Pride on the ball. Sending it wide to Conrad. Both teams, teams really moving the ball well here in the second half. Conrad driving it down the lane. Looking to find Howell. Howell with a little stumble and that ball is gonna go out of bounds. Throw in coming in here for X. And here is Megan Earl checking back into the match here in the 68th minute. So after getting some rest here, she'll re-enter and out of the game is Gemma LeBlanc. So a bit more offense likely will Megan Earl provide here for the Axelman. And folks, we're so glad that you've joined us. You can make sure to visit bellaline.ca slash TV1 for the TV1 live webcast schedule and on-demand content. You'll also get information on TV1 live events available only to Bella Line 5 customers in Atlantic Canada on Channel 1 and 401. Bella Line 5, three amazing services, one amazing price. Pride on the ball here for Acadia Conrad. <coughs> That ball out of bounds. Throw in here for Conrad. That ball off of Wilkie. Hey, Aiden and Saint of X. Just a friendly reminder that there's nothing wrong with remembering today's game. Check out keepitsocial.ca for tips and resources. Ball out of bounds once again. Throw in coming in here for Acadia. Noseworthy Smith. Earl with some hustle. Back to Noseworthy Smith. She's going to try and cross it there, but it'll be received by X. Pride on the ball now. Pride with the long shot, and that one is just going to go wide. And goalie's ball here. Nicole McDonald. Howell. Noseworthy Smith for Acadia on the ball. And she is going to get it off the X defense. That is going to be a corner kick for Acadia. And a good tackle there from Olivia Wilkie at the touchline. But again, Noseworthy Smith providing that pressure 
for Acadia and Windsor side a corner kick here. Taking that corner for Acadia is Katie Ross. And it is into the box. The referee is going to signal goalie's ball. So you can likely expect Acadia to put on the pressure here in the final 20 minutes. You'd have to think that it, insertion of Megan Earl back in the lineup here has a lot to do with Acadia looking to push forward. Wilkie's going to take this ball. Sending it out wide. Ellis. Pass back to Parks. Parks to Brennan. Brennan finding Ellis once again. Ellis is going to send that ball down long. Noseworthy Smith on the ball now for Acadia. She's going to send it to Earl. Earl looking to go past the defense, but Wilkie is going to stop that ball. Conrad. Intercepted by Ellis now. Ellis on the chase down. She is going to find Goss on the left. Goss hustling to keep that ball inbounds, and it is just going to escape past her feet there. A good look there from Ellis to find Goss, but just out of her reach. Earl on the ball for Acadia now. Quick send out to Boudreaux. Boudreaux looking to take it into the box, and she does, and she's looking to chip that to Noseworthy Smith, and that's going to go off the top of her laces, and she's going to send that one high. A great run there from Jenna Boudreaux. They used her speed and that touch to, to get past the ex-defender, and we'll get another look at it here on the replay. Jenna Boudreaux again with that fantastic touch to spring free and looks across the box and on the end of it was Kinsella Noseworthy Smith and she holds her head. But a good effort there and a difficult ball to bring down. But again, positive stuff there from the Axewomen and they're putting on the pressure here in the 73rd. Cunningham on the ball. And there is a header there from Nickerson. X on the ball now. And there is Brennan. Brennan to Brook. Gibbons on the ball here for X. X with the quick passes. Brennan's going to try and clear that one out, but received by Cunningham. Off of Cunningham. And that is going to be an X throw in. Going in the ball for St. FX here is a number three, Elise Brennan with a quick throw to Ellis. Ellis beating out Pride and she's gonna pass it back to Brennan. And there is Nickerson clearing that ball to the center. Now Earl on the ball for Acadia. A little bit of a takedown. Referee's going to call that one clean. Fraser putting on the brakes as Cunningham gets to the ball first. Starting to get a little physical here in the second half between these two teams. And Cunningham was stopped there on a dime by Claire Gibbons, and Gibbons is called for the foul. And Katie Ross will have another chance here to swing one in the box for the Axewomen. Here is Ross at the half. And she's going to drive that one right to the entrance of the penalty box, but it is going to receive a head of St. Effect, so that ball is going to go out of bounds now. Throw in coming in for Acadia. Conrad with the short throw to Scoville. Scoville still on the ball. With some pressure met by Alex Goss. And Brennan is going to clear that one out. Nickerson beating Fraser. Now Noseworthy Smith. Noseworthy Smith sending it down the line. Wilkie looking to clear that out. And a nice header from Fraser, but met by Nickerson, who's going to send it to Ross. 
Ross is going to change direction, driving it right to Boudreaux. Boudreaux looking to find Ross. Ross looking for that quick pass to Pride, and that one is just going to sail by her. And again, good movement there from Acadia. Katie Ross tried to play that one into the feet of Michelle Pride, but Pride was already on the run and was asking for it into the box, but just a bit of miscommunication there. Throw in from X. That ball out of bounds once again. Another throw in coming in here. Taking it this time is Brennan. X on the ball here now. Fraser looking to send it up. Stopped by Nickerson. Coming in there is Howell to turn it around. X still on the ball here though. Brennan to Wilkie. Pressure from Noseworthy Smith and Earl and Pride. Katie really fighting for the ball here. A lot of great pressure from Acadia here. Eager to get on the board. Boudreaux on the ball versus Brennan. Boudreaux looking to cross that. St. FX's defense is there. And there is a shot from Katie Ross. Just tipped off the hands of McDonald. And you could see in her hop jump after that shot. Really hoping that one was going to go in. And what a strike there from Katie Ross. But an even better save from Nicole McDonald for the X-Women keeping her squad up 1-0. Corner kick coming in here for Acadia. There is Ross looking to find that ball and looking to tip it in there. There we go. That is in, and that is going to be off the last foot there of Scoville. And just as the pressure kept mounting, the Axemen, Axewomen, pardon, are on the board here and equalized. We'll see a replay here. Katie Ross with another great delivery into the box. Off the hands of keeper Nicole McDonald. Megan Earl got a touch off the head of Nickerson. And we don't know if Scoville was the last to touch, but regardless, it's a goal for Acadia. Perhaps we'll get another look. Looks like it might have been off the head of Nickerson there and Scoville kind of just following that ball into the net. Right. I think it, I think it was Nickerson who had the last touch on that one. And a substitution here. Goss is back out of the match. And returning, or her first action, pardon, is Catherine Kennedy for the X-Women. Well, it's all tied up here at 1, 78-19. Acadia fashion late in the game, tying up the goal, keeping themselves alive. And what else can you expect from these AUS championships? Another tied match, and... There is Earl on the ball. She's going to drive it up. Boudreaux for the Axe Women. Cunningham on the ball for Acadia, looking to send it back into the center. And the Axe Women, X Women, pardon, we'll see that one out as Clara Gibbons is in a lot of pain on the ground here, as you can see. Looking to be in a lot of discomfort as Claire Gibbons as the trainer comes out to to help her get back to feed and we'll get another replay here. We see Megan Earl coming back in defense and seem to clip the ankle there of Claire Gibbons and you see her holding her her calf muscle there and uh Yeah, it looks like she definitely knew that the pain was already there before she even landed. Yep, definitely a, a sudden knock there, and uh, wasn't expecting Megan Earl to be on her heels. This would, this would be a tough blow to the x women here in the 80th minute of action. Claire Gibbons seems to be in a lot of pain here as she gets to her feet. Looks like she is 
coming off pretty slowly on the field there, so definitely in a lot of pain. Well, we're all tied up at ones here, 80th minute. Going to be a little bit of stop time definitely at the end of this half for some injury, but it looks like we have a substitution coming in and coming into the match here. Now is number seven, Rachel Hawkins for St. FX. Throw in from the Axe Women. Ross on the ball. She's going to send it to Nickerson. Nickerson keeping that one away from Fraser. Now Ross sending it down far. But it is going to go into the hands of McDonald as she pressures a little coming outside of her box. Scoville on the ball. Pride. Ross. And it looks like we're going to see a handball call there. And you could hear every single person on that field. A little bit of a shrill yell there for handball call. Brittany Parks will be uh, given a yellow card there on the handball. I guess the ball was was headed to a, a dangerous area and the arm of Brittany Park stopping it is enough to get a yellow card there and again Katie Ross will deliver this one for the Axelman. Katie Ross with the free kick and she's going to drive that one low and that one is just going to go wide off the left side. Good decision there from Katie Ross to, to skid that one across the turf and looking for just a deflection from one of the Axemen forwards, but out oh for a goal kick. Wilkie taking that kick from the goalie. Noseworthy Smith. Fraser. Ross with the header. Howell getting pushed from behind, and that is going to be a quick call from the referee there as she did go down pretty hard. Katie really putting on the pressure here in the last few minutes. Katie Ross with the free kick once again here for Acadia. She's going to put some spin on that ball to find it into the box. And it looks like it's going to go off Call there from the referee, saying that that's goalie's ball. Looked at, looked as if uh, there were a call for a handball there in the box. Exum will have a chance to regain possession here and move the ball up the field here in what is now the 84th minute. Here is Wilkie. Finding the head of Howell. Nickerson on the ball. Parks. Cunningham. She's going to drive that up the right side of her field, but just a little bit wide. That ball is out of bounds. Throw in coming in here from Brennan to Brennan. And there is Noseworthy Smith looking to send it up, but it will find Wilkie. Ross with the header. Brennan on the ball for X, and she's going to send it wide to Kennedy. Kennedy's going to find Brooke. Brennan. Kennedy. Kennedy's going to drive that one up to Fraser. Fraser's going to trap that and ground it. But Ross is going to clear that one out for Acadia. Found by Zip. Going to send that one to Brennan. Brennan out wide to the other Brennan. Back to Brennan. X looking on the ball here. There's Fraser. Fraser's looking to send it up to Ellis. Ellis on the ball. Conrad defending her. And Pride is going to turn that one and received by Boudreaux. Boudreaux is looking to send that one out to Earl, but it is going to be sent out of bounds by Brennan. Some great movement there from the X-Wing pushing forward and Frazier did well to try to find Ellis and 
Ellis with another good effort to try to get that one at the top of the box. Axelman now will have a chance on the free kick. And the sun is shining on that half there as Katie Ross takes the free kick for Acadia. A beautiful day here in Sydney, Nova Scotia for Championship Sunday. 85-43 on the clock. Potential overtime, but there is still some minutes to be played in the second half. Ross is going to send it up, and we are going to see a takedown called against Acadia there. Saint effects ball. Wilkie driving that ball to the half, received by Cunningham. Pride to Boudreaux. Boudreaux sending it to Noseworthy Smith. And that ball is going to go out of bounds off of Kinsella Noseworthy Smith. Throw in coming in here for Elise Brennan for St. FX. Throw in. Ross on the ball, and she's going to send it to the center. Ellis on the ball for X off of Nickerson, and Nickerson how putting on the brakes to turn to get that ball. Now Kennedy for X. She's going to send it back to slow it down. Earl putting some pressure on. And there is Howell coming in, and that is going to go off of her X throw in. And an X women's substitution now coming in the match. Logan Lee Knight in her place of Margot Frazier here in the 87th minute. So some fresh legs here for the X women to close up the, the match in regular time. You can hear the X crowd going wild here. And Logan Lee Knight uh, is used to playing in these minutes. She's she's come into the match at these key moments for the X women, providing a lot of fresh legs and pressure. Knows Ruthie Smith on the ball for Acadia. Some defense there from X received by Ross. Ross is going to send that one wide to Cunningham. And there is X with some spin on the ball. Parks up to Hawkins. Hawkins is sending it to Kennedy. Nickerson for the Axe women. Conrad. Noseworthy Smith looking to send that one to Howell. And you can see a little bit of unhappiness with the way that one turned out. And you can see that she really is feeling that pressure. Here she is, Noseworthy Smith. Howell. Conrad with the header, but there is Ellis. Ellis. Ross on the ball. She's going to pass it to Conrad. Lee Hawkins. And there is a big drive there from Kennedy into the feet of Cunningham, but chasing that down there is Parks. Nickerson looking to clear that one out to Boudreaux. And that is going to go off of Brennan. Throw one coming in here for Acadia. Cunningham. Cunningham looking for the low drive, and that one is going to go off of Parks. Acadia throw in. And the fourth official here on the sideline signals three minutes of stoppage time. Those are the Smith up to Boudreaux. But X is going to clear that ball out. And the Acadia bench is up and in dismay here. 
Jenna Butcher was brought down at the edge of the area, but no call from the referee. X on the ball now. Brennan up to Ellis. And that is going to get cleared out by Conrad. Howell. To Ross. Ross is going to send it to Pride. Pride is going to drive that ball up the center. Noseworthy Smith on the ball now. And she's going to take that shot looking for Earl's head. On the ball is Kennedy. Conrad. Conrad to Ross. Conrad sending it down the field to Howell. And just called offside there was Jenna Howell. Excellent look, look forward. Zip it on the ball here for X. And she's going to send it to Ellis. But Scoville's going to take it away, sending it to Howell, to Noseworthy Smith. There's Lee Knight against Conrad. Now X looking for an option here. And a good run forward there from Alex Brook. Keeping it inbound. And it is going to go off of Acadia. X has had difficulty uh, the last few minutes pushing forward and trying to get opportunities, but here's a good one here at the end of, end of regular time for them to get a chance here in the box. Throw in coming in here from Kennedy to Lee Knight. Ross putting some pressure on. And that is going to be a goalie's ball. Emma Connell with the ball here for Acadia. Taking that ball here for Acadia is Conrad. She's going to send it to Ross. And Ross is going to drive that ball down long, looking for Howell, and it finds her. Howell looking to cross it. She finds Scoville. But that ball is kept out now. Ross on the ball. She's going to send that into the center. A header from X. And an Acadia header into the hands of McDonald. Well, there you have it, folks. The whistle is blown. And you know what that means? Just like every other almost game here at the Subway AUS Women's Soccer Championship, why not head into overtime to let these awesome teams keep battling it out? So we are going to take a quick break, and then we will be back for the first 15-minute half of overtime. The Atlantic University Sport Basketball season is here, and AUS brings you Saturday Night Basketball on Fine TV. Tune in to catch the games of the week every Saturday night at 6 and 8. Watch Saturday nights all season long on 5 TV, Channel 1, and 401. Follow your teams as they battle it out on the road to the championships. Check out AUSHoops.ca for championship details. AUS Basketball is presented by Subway, the official fuel of Atlantic University Sport. Sweat. It says I was here. I worked here. It says I only have so much to give before I have to take. What I lose, I want to get back. Sweat says, I earn this. Gatorade, created to help replace what you sweat out. If you like this, you'll like this too. Introducing Budweiser Prohibition Brew. The first non-alcoholic beer that actually tastes like beer. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Oh, boy. Thank you. Thank you. You make me feel so young. Pink young. Pass it on. You make me feel so spring is spring. These are Subway's roast beef and turkey breast subs. And these... 
Wait for it. Are Subway's roast beef and turkey breast subs with no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. It's a big change you can feel good about. And it's how we're leading our commitment to feel good, taste good food. Make all your sand wishes come true at Subway. Welcome back to Sydney K. Breton for the Subway AUS Women's Soccer Championships. And just like the trend this weekend has been, we are going to head into overtime. So for you folks who are just tuning in or watching at home, the way the overtime works in this championship is there are two 15-minute halves. There is no golden goal, so these teams both have opportunities to score as many goals as they can. And then if it is still tied after that, it will go into shootouts. All right, we have an update from our sideline reporter, Jordan. Take it away. Uh, coach from the Santa FX X women, Claire Gibbons, is okay, and she will be available in this overtime frame. And just a quick update on the out-of-town uh, scoreboard. The men's soccer championships, Cape Breton University has uh, their AUS soccer championships with a 3-1 win. And right well, back to you, Rayson. Overtime coming up. Thank you so much. Well, that is pretty excited. We are here in Cape Breton. Looks like the Capers men have won the AUS Soccer Championship, so that is a big congratulations going out to them. But we still have a lot of soccer action here. It is not over yet. 1-1 one, one here in the overtime. Yeah, and once again, we saw Acadia equalizing late, and uh, once again, it was Candace Conrad proving to be the hero there in the 78th minute for them on the head. Once, And uh, she's been so great defensively for the Axemen over the weekend, and She's uh, scored a couple big goals now in the championship, so both teams getting set to take the field, and we're excited again for another extra time period. Well, it looks like Acadia has taken the field, and San Effects just finishing their cheer, and we're going to go straight into the 15-minute half, so a lot more time, and, and some of these players must be tired because they've seen overtime another time before. This isn't their first rodeo here, so... Great job by all of these players battling it out for an AUS championship banner. Looks like we're all ready to go here. And Acadia on the ball. There is Ross. And chasing that ball down there with a lot of hustle for Acadia. It's number 22, Jenna Howell. That ball out of bounds off of St. FX. Acadia with the throw in. Howell with the throw in. And there comes Conrad. Logan Lee Knight still on the field here and a big takedown there. Two Acadia players, Pride and Conrad with a little bump with Logan Lee Knight there. And Lee Knight looks a little sore there, hunching over. <coughs> grasping her hip area, and I think she'll be okay. But a tough collision there, involving three players. x -Men back in possession. On the ball there is Wilkie. Pressure coming in from Noseworthy Smith. Parks up to Kennedy. And Ross is going to look to turn that ball in. Now on the ball here is Zip. Zip is going to send it up to Brennan. Received by Boudreau. And Boudreau is going to turn it. Giving it to Cunningham. Conrad chasing down the ball here for Acadia now. She's going to send it up to Scoville. Scoville up to Howell. But that one's just going to sneak past her. Good idea from Scoville there to look look for Howell early on the wing when, when she was available, but her pass just out of her reach. X throw in. And now a drive down to the center to Logan Lee Knight. Taken away there by Nickerson, but followed through by Kennedy. And a nice stopped ball there from Cunningham as Ellis was looking to take a shot. Brennan on the ball. And it is going to be taken away by Pride and off of Brennan. That's going to be an Acadia throw in. 
Cunningham with the throw. Finding the boot of Boudreaux. Ellis on the ball for St. FX here. Logan Lee Knight with some assistance. She's going to send it out to Kennedy. Kennedy looking to drive it up, but that is going to go into the hands of Emma Connell. Connell with the drop kick. And a header from Brooke. Ross on the chase down. And we are going to see a handball call there. Free kick for Acadia. Katie Ross taking the free kick. And a drive up there from Conrad. Looking to find Scoville. And Noseworthy Smith. Howell with some hustle. Earl on the ball for Acadia, but a big push back from Brennan coming in from behind Cunningham. Finding Boudreaux. Boudreaux looking to take it in the center. Slowing it down. Passing back to Ross. And Ross is going to wind up with a shot. And that is just going to sneak over the crossbar. A lot closer than we maybe thought it would have been. Yeah, the ball hung up in the air there. And uh, Katie Ross has that ability from distance to, to put it on goal. And she, she was just over the bar there with her effort. Wilkie taking this ball here. For McDonald. Header from Earl. Pride sending it up to Boudreaux. Boudreaux is going to chase it down. Coming in on her heels is Brennan. Boudreaux is going to look to cross it. Noseworthy Smith trying to get ahead on it. And that is cleared out by Parks. Lee Knight on the ball now. Pressure from Ross. And that ball is going to go out of bounds. Throw in for the X women. X women have been successful generating uh, offensive opportunities. They're using Jenna Boudreaux on the right side. She's been able to elude defenders and swing the, that ball in. So look to Acadia to, to keep pressure on this right side now. Cunningham looking for Noseworthy Smith. And she does get there out to Boudreaux. Looking to send that ball up. But no one quite there to receive it. With some hustle coming in for it is Pride, but sending that one out of bounds is number 14, Olivia Zip. Boudreaux to Noseworthy Smith. It's going to go back to Boudreaux. Boudreaux is going to find Noseworthy Smith, who will keep it in. And now she's going to try and cross that ball there. But a header out for St. FX's Parks. And cleared out by Hawkins. Conrad with the chase down, throw in for Acadia. Scoville on the ball. And that one is just going to be out of bounds off of X once again. Throw in coming in for Acadia. Conrad on the ball. Header there from Wilkie that is going to go out of bounds. Acadia throw in. This time looking like it will be Jenna Howell taking it for Acadia to Scoville. Finding Boudreaux. Howell looking to take that in. And a quick pass and Howell again on the ball and she's going to look to cross it. And that is going to go off a St. FX player constituting a corner kick for Acadia. Some more great stuff there from Scoville and Howell to to move the ball efficiently and get that, get that ball across. And now they have a great chance here with Katie Ross in the corner. And as you can see, it is a beautiful day out. Look at that rainbow we just saw on the screen. Gorgeous day here in Sydney. Ross, and a header there from Scoville, and that one's going to go just above the post. Katie, once again, really applying the pressure here in the extra time period. Here is Wilkie. Ross on the ball. Boudreaux. And we are going to get a call there from the linesman as well as the referee. A little bit of a takedown there from Brennan. Another strong challenge from Elise Brennan. And Jenna Boudreaux did well to, to win the call there. And 
Katie with another chance. Katie Ross to swing this one in. Ross with the free kick into the box and a header right out of there from Brooke. Ellis with the turn. Ross again looking to send it in. And once again, Brooke meeting it with her head. This on Conrad on the ball. And Lee Knight's going to send that up. But Ross with the interception. Cunningham back to Nickerson for Acadia. Up to Pride. Lee Knight with the pressure on the back. Pride looking to send that one up. And here is Megan Earl. Earl's going to try and cross that ball. And it's going to go into the hands of the goalie. And it looks like she got there just in time. And a fortunate bounce there for the X-Women. Landed on the foot of Megan Earl. She did well to swing that across and fumbled into the hands of Nicole McDonald. And X-Women are lucky to, uh, to not have uh, squandered a goal there. Conrad sending it up for Acadia. That one's going to go out of bounds. Throw in coming in here from Brittany Parks. Here in the extra time period, every minute detail, every touch is so important. And no team can uh, can suffer small mistakes like that that can lead to good opportunities to score. And we're already closing in on the 10 minute. And keep in mind, this first half here is 15 minutes. There will be a second 15 minute half. But like you said, the time is going quickly here for these two teams still tied up at one apiece. And Lee Knight's touch there just eluded her in. The Axelman again will have a chance to push forward. Conrad with the throw in. Received by Parks. Boudreau grounding that ball. Howell. Brennan. Ross Pride. Pride's going to send it back to Cunningham. Now Cunningham looking to turn it around. Noseworthy Smith looking to send it to Boudreau. And Boudreaux looking to go for that ball. And a good stuff there from Rachel Cunningham to get the ball out of her feet and find Kinsella Noseworthy Smith who played a quick ball into the box and Boudreaux almost on the end of it. And there is Ross with the shot and that one's going to go just behind the net. Taking the ball here for St. Effects is Elise Brennan. Quick pass to Wilkie. Noseworthy Smith coming in for some pressure, but Wilkie's going to clear that one past the half. Received by Conrad's head. Ross on the ball now to Howell. Howell's going to look to get that one up, but it is taken away by Zip. Scoville with the relief for Acadia. Cunningham up to Boudreaux. Boudreaux versus Kennedy. Boudreaux is going to take it into the box. And there is Kennedy with some quick defense, and that ball cleared out by X now. Good recovery tackle there from Kennedy to get back, and very timely challenge. Ross is going to send it back to Nickerson. Now to Cunningham again. Cunningham wanted to send that up to Pride, but off of X's defense. Nickerson on the chase down here. And that is going to get passed back to goalie Connell. Lee Knight with some pressure. Conrad on the ball here. Noseworthy Smith looking to find Boudreaux. Boudreaux is going to save that ball in bounds. No call from the linesman. And Pride is going to go down there. Looks like something in her leg is just cramped up, and she's going to try and walk that one off. Yeah, Pride seemed to be moving before the ball got to her feet, and her outstretched leg just a bit too far there, and she's shaking off a bit of discomfort. Pride looking to get that ball, but Brennan is on it, and she's going to pass it to Brooke. Brooke to Wilkie. And Wilkie's going to drive that one up long but it will be met by Emma Connell in net. Call from the referee there. X is free kick. To 
taking that ball is Elise Brennan, and she's going to go with a short pass. It's going to come back to her. Wilkie. Parks on the ball. Relief from Zip. Brooke to Brennan. Brennan's going to send that one up. And that's going to go off of Cunningham for Acadia. Throw in coming in here for X. X on the ball, Brooke. Wilkie, Brooke. And a chase down there from Parks. Parks is going to send it across, but it is going to go behind the net. Good ball from Alex Brooke there to find Parks, and who did equally well to get that one across, but just behind the net there, and Acadia will have a chance with Emma Connell to push forward again. Connell on the ball. She's going to send it close to the half. Header there from Brennan. Zip looking to send it up to Ellis. Ellis with the turn, finding Brennan, but Nickerson's going to get there. Brennan's going to keep it in her feet. And a bit of a takedown there. Both Brennan and Nickerson there were uh, battling for possession and looked as if Nickerson stumbled and while falling... Uh, Took Chloe Brennan down with her, and the X women have generated a good opportunity here on the free kick. Taking the ball for the X women is Elise Brennan. It looks like we have a trainer coming onto the pitch here, and. Acadia's player is down here, and that does look like Nickerson. Looks as though the trainer is holding her arm, so when she was tangled up there with Chloe Brennan, it seems as if she took a knock, and uh, she'll get some treatment here in the final minutes of or the final few moments here of the. Uh, first overtime period. <coughs> Looks like she's keeping herself composed, but could be something pretty serious there for Nickerson. Looks like we're going to have a free kick here now from Brennan. And a little bit of stop time here in the first 15 minute half as the clock has reached 15, but we did see that injury. And it looks as though Nicole Wombolt, who was injured in the first half of the match, is returning in replace of Nickerson for the time being. So good to see Wombolt back on her feet, but I'm sure the Axemen hope that Nickerson is okay. And that ball is crossed, and look for a header there, but the Axemen are going to get that one out. And that is going to be the whistle called from the referee. So, folks, the second half is a quick turnaround. It's coming back right away here. So we're going to stay with you. And a, and a good good first half there, but once again, still kind of a little ping-pong action back and forth. Yeah, there weren't, uh, weren't too many good quality chances there for both sides. But, uh, so, but some great possession play f from both sides once again. And uh, it'll be interesting to see who, uh, if and how, Either squad is able to get one on the board here in the final 15 minutes before penalties. And on your screen, there is Nickerson with head coach Amit Batra for the Acadia women's soccer team. So looks like they're just talking to the referee to see if she's good to go. Uh, but she does look like she's all intact and looks like she's kind of ready and urgent to get onto that field. Well, both teams are ready to go here. Megan Earl from Acadia just checking to see the scoop. What's going on? As Nickerson makes her way back to the uh, to the bench, so unsure 
exactly what is happening there, but... Well, the whistle's bum are ready to go, and Fraser back on for X here. And some pressure from Scoville there, and that ball is out of bounds. Throw in coming in here for Acadia. This is Rachel Cunningham. That ball kicked out of bounds. Quick turnaround, X throw in. Brennan with the throw in, looking to find Ellis. Boudreaux on the ball for Acadia. And a quick pass there to Earl. And that ball still in play. Now with X's Fraser. Kennedy with the one touch. And there is Conrad making sure it goes out of bounds for her to throw in. And taking that throw in for them is Cunningham. Back to Conrad. Conrad's going to send that one wide. Throw in here for X. And it is going to be Elise Brennan with the throw in. That ball passed back. And a quick pass back from Wilkie to the goalie and some pressure from Noseworthy Smith coming in there. Earl on the ball. And there is a turn from number 11, Michelle Pride, the captain of Acadia's soccer team. There's Ross looking to find Howell. Parks gets there first, then Brennan. Ellis on the ball. Fraser. Chasing that ball down there is Zip. Conrad's going to get there first and send that one out of bounds. Throw in from X. Ellis finding that ball. Passing it to, to Brennan. Brennan's going to go back to Fraser. Fraser is going to take it back to Wilkie. Parks on the ball here for X. And a nice stop there from Wombolt. Pride on the ball and Scoville. Noseworthy Smith for Acadia here. Ross on the ball. Ross is going to beat out Brennan. And she's going to look to send it up to Noseworthy Smith. Wilkie's going to get there first and send that ball out. Noseworthy Smith. Finding Ross. Ross is going to look for the low turn, and that one is going to be kicked out by San Effects. Some good pressure there from the Acadia Axe women and the referee points for a corner kick and as we know these opportunities are quite dangerous especially with Katie Ross on the ball here. Her ability to swing it in. We'll get to see that once again. Ross on the corner. She's going to send it into the middle and we're going to look for a header there from Conrad and it's going to touch the top of the bar and go over. Another good chance there and well done by Candace Conrad to meet the ball in the air. She's been successful doing that all weekend. And there is Brennan taking the ball for X. Stopped there by Earl. Howell and Noseworthy Smith, but Parks is going to stay on the ball here for X. Sending it back to Rowe. Fraser with a one touch back. Now it's coming back up for her. And some hustle on defense there from Cunningham. And Conrad is going to clear that ball out. Noseworthy Smith on the receiving end. Rowe once again trying to send it back. Short pass to Ellis. And Pride is going to get called there for a little aggression on Ellis. St. FX free kick. 
Well, well done there from Kelsey Ellis. She's so patient when she receives the ball. She stops and allows her teammates to regroup and she looks to looks for those supporting numbers in attack. Taking the ball here for X is Wilkie. And Wilkie's gonna drive it into the box. And there is Conrad to meet it with a header to get it out. And now Howell is gonna run it down the field. Howell's gonna take it into the center. Nice. But that is stopped by Brooke. Perhaps one touch too many there for Howell and the X defense was there to alleviate the pressure. And a drop kick there from Connell. Earl on the ball for Acadia and it is gonna almost go on top of the goalie's head. They're looking for that chip again like they have done previously at these championships, but that is gonna get stopped by McDonald. And a good heads up play there from Megan Earl. Realized that Nicole McDonald was off her line and looked to volley that one on a bouncing shot over her head, but McDonald did well there to track back. Ross on the ball. She's going to send it back into the box. Called offside there are the Acadia Axe women. And taking the ball here once again for Santa Fex is Olivia Wilkie. Wilkie to Fraser. Met by Cunningham. Stopped by Conrad. And Conrad's going to send it right back to where it came from. Brooke on the ball now. Brooke really hustling it up. And Womble to back for the Acadia Axe women. And she's going to send it up to Noseworthy Smith. A little bit of a push. And Megan Earl down. Looks like she's trying to get up. And she's got a major limp. But she is up. There is Ross. Megan are really struggling to, to move on the field right now. So Katie will likely have to take a, a substitute off the bench to in replace of her if they have one. Howell's going to send it to Noseworthy Smith. Noseworthy Smith looking for the shot blocked by Rowe. And it looks like we do have an injury here now, but a different Acadia player, and the trainer has been summoned by the referee. Just looking to see the number there. That is Noseworthy Smith for Acadia. So we get a quick replay here of, of the incident and Noseworthy Smith, as she took the shot, it deflected back and she took that one to the face. So just a bit of discomfort there. And Hopefully not a concussion there for Noseworthy Smith. That ball did ricochet off the back of row back into her head pretty hard as we saw there. So she's gonna take a knee on the sideline make sure she's okay. Wilkie with the ball for X. And Noseworthy Smith already back into the game. She is on the ball. Boudreaux for Acadia. Back to Noseworthy Smith who's going to send it into the middle there. And an almost header there and Pride looking to get that ball but X is just going to clear that one out. Kennedy on the ball now versus Wombolt. Cunningham for Acadia is going to drive that ball up. Brennan getting there first. And that ball is going to be sent long and a chase down here by Fraser and Conrad, but it's going to sneak out of bounds, throw in for Acadia. And Cunningham usually does well to get the ball out of her feet on that right side, but that one a bit too large of a touch and got out of her control. And that one pass back from Noseworthy Smith was out of bounds as Cunningham wound up to send it. So call by the linesman right away. Throw in coming in here for St. FX. Brennan on the ball. Quick passes back. 
Wilkie. She's going to look to send it up to Brennan. Brennan and Ross. Now Brooke to Brennan, to Brooke. Wombolt on that ball, and Earl's on it now for Acadia. Back to Wombolt. Wombolt's up to Ross. Ross to Earl. And Earl is going to send that one up. And it is going to go off the head of Wilkie. Acadia throw in. Some good ball movement there from the Axelman. And Earl tried to go over the top to a running wood drill. And we are going to get a referee's call there. So still no sign of uh, Emily Nickerson. She remains on the Acadia bench. And there is a throw in for X. Conrad on the ball. And a chase down there, Wombolt and Kennedy. Wombolt's gonna shield that one out of bounds to go to the goalie. And on the ball there is Connell. But taking it for her is Conrad. Conrad's going to drive that one deep. Here is Ellis. Ellis with a little bit of a missed pass received by Howell. See if Acadia here can attack in numbers. And that ball is going to sail out of bounds. There went for Acadia. Here is Boudreaux. Or rather, she's going to drop it and wait for Wombolt to take it, opening herself up. And there she is looking to get it, and it is going to go off of an Acadia player. Throw in coming in for X. And just as we saw in the semifinal match, a goalkeeper substitution for the X women. Aaron Visser looking to come in here and replace it Nicole McDonald. The same tactical move that was that was done in the in their match versus the CBU Capers in the semifinal. Aaron Visser coming in to likely handle the, the penalty kick duties for the X women. And speaking to the coaches and the teams after, we see that that you know, that is definitely, they confirmed that was a tactical play. And they said that she's, you know, very quick and agile. And they want her in net on the shootouts. And it looks like we're going to get another substitution. Right. Another tactical substitution, you think, here. Um, Annie Little coming in in replace of Megan Earl, who took a knock there on her foot just moments earlier. So both teams getting set here for what is likely penalties with just a couple minutes to play here in extra time. That ball out of bounds. Throw in coming in from Scoville. Stolen away by Brooke. However, there's still still time for one one team to pull ahead here in extra time and avoid penalties. And, and Wombolt is not going to trust her goalie there. She's going to make sure it's safe and get that one out of bounds. Looks like a lot of these players are getting banged up. You can see from the booth here now that they're close to our side. When we see their faces when they're going down, there is some physicality in this game. Yeah, now approaching 120 minutes of play, and both teams have had a long weekend of, of soccer. And there is Brennan with a shot, and that is going to go just on top of the goalpost. What a chance for X. A strong effort there from Chloe Brennan. And we'll get another look here on the replay. Good stuff there from Brittany Parks to find her, and on the bounce was Chloe Brennan, and just over the bar, you can see Emma Connell there was reaching for it, and fell back in into the goal. X on the ball. There is Wilkie. And there is Howell on the ball for Acadia. She's gonna drive it down the lane but it is gonna be stopped by X's defense. Now Ellis on the ball. Ellis looking to find Fraser. Good Fraser's ball. on the ball. And 
the fourth official on the sideline signals one minute of stoppage time here in the extra frame. So not much time for both teams to work, but very important minute it'll likely be. That was Ruthie Smith on the ball for Acadia, sending it up, and Boudreaux is going to chase it down. So just an update from our sideline reporter, Jordan Ellis, said that Nickerson is in fact okay, but just this late in the game with shootouts just around the corner, she's just not going to get back in. Boudreaux on the ball for Acadia, and that ball is going to go off. Seen effects player. Throw in coming in for Acadia. Noseworthy Smith. She's going to send that ball to the center. And it's going to bounce off the goalie's hand. And a try there from Little. A good recovery save there from Nicole McDonald. Well, there it is. That is your whistle. So this championship is going to be decided by the penalty shootouts. Folks, we're going to take a quick break as they get set up. We'll be right back. like me back. Like his friend. Good idea. Can you forge my mom's signature? I can, but will I? No. The Atlantic University Sport Basketball season is here, and AUS brings you Saturday Night Basketball on Fine TV. Tune in to catch the games of the week every Saturday night at 6 and 8. Watch Saturday nights all season long on 5 TV, Channel 1, and 401. Follow your teams as they battle it out on the road to the championships. Check out AUSHoops.ca for championship details. AUS Basketball is presented by Subway, the official fuel of Atlantic University Sport. These are Subway's roast beef and turkey breast subs. And these... Wait for it. Our Subway's roast beef and turkey breast subs with no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. It's a big change you can feel good about. And it's how we're leading our commitment to feel good, taste good food. Make all your sand wishes come true at Subway. Welcome back to Championship Final Sunday here and take a look at that beautiful trophy. That is what these teams are battling it out to win and you know how they're going to do it? Penalty shootouts, that's right. Two 15-minute halves of overtimes played and now they're going to have to go to, to shootouts to see what happens and it is not sudden death. So the way that the shootouts work in this championship because we have seen it before. It is five shots on net and the best of five will win it. And after that, it will go to sudden death. So lots of opportunities here and it looks like the shootouts are just about to start. The Acadia Axe women are coming onto the field. And you can see on your screen there, a beautiful shot by our wonderful Universum crew. Thank you so much for being here with us on this championship weekend. You've done a fantastic job. And everyone joining us on TV One, we're so happy you're here with us as well. And here we go again. It's all about the shootouts. Both teams evenly matched throughout the game. One goal apiece. Some great efforts from both sides, but it all comes down to this. And uh, not an unfamiliar sight for the uh, CNFXX women who uh, had a, a penalty shootout to decide their semifinal against the top seed at Cape Breton University Capers on Friday night. And... Uh, just as we saw in that match, Aaron Visser entered the game here with a couple minutes left and extra time to handle those duties in the goal for, for the X-Women. So you'd think that uh, what worked for them on Friday night may may prove uh, of benefit here as well. So That is exactly it. You know, she uh, did save a ball 
If we can remember, she saved that ball and then her player put it in and there it was. So it'll be interesting to see if they go with the same five shooters and uh, it looks as if Margot Frazier is starting it off here for the Santa Fe X women and uh, we know on Friday night that she scored her penalty for the uh, X women so she'll start things off for us here in this penalty shootout. And what a way to what a way to close out an AUS championship by with a penalty shootout here on Sunday. All right, here we go. Margot Frazier, the first shooter for St. FX. And remember, it is five shots on net per team. And then it goes to sudden death if it is tied up in goal for Acadia. Emma Connell, Margot Fraser. And that is a goal for St. FX's Margot Fraser. And a good penalty there from the spot for Margot Fraser. Picked her spot very calmly and put it away. And approaching the line here now for the Acadia Axe Women, Katie Ross is going to take the first penalty shot for Acadia. And in goal, your new goalie, number one, Aaron Visser for St. FX. Here is Ross. And Ross is going to drive that one into the goal. And despite Visser choosing well, Katie Ross picked her spot and put it away nicely into the bottom left corner. 1-1. One, one. Coming up to bat here for St. FX, number three, Elise Brennan. And she's going to take her time to approach, mentally preparing for these important shootouts. Brennan with the shot on Connell. And that is going to score for Brennan. Another good penalty makes it 2 2. Connell was moving from side to side and seemed to choose wrong. And well, approaching here now for Acadia is number 13. And that is Rachel Cunningham. Cunningham. And that is going to be saved by Aaron Visser. It looked to be a good penalty there from Cunningham, but Visser was there and chose her, chose her spot correctly and a great save there from Aaron Visser. Tactical jobs by those St. FX coaches. They have a goalie trained for these shootouts. Two saves in the championship and still some more shots to be taken here. Coming up here now is St. FX's number four, and that is Brittany Parks. And Parks is going to score for St. FX. Another good penalty there for Max. Running up here now is one of your all-stars for Acadia, Kinsella Noseworthy-Smith. And another save there by Aaron Visser, Noseworthy-Smith's shot blocked. Noseworthy-Smith holds her head. I don't think she placed that one where she planned to. And uh, straight to the hands of Visser. And she made a key save there. And uh, after three shooters, X leads 3 1.
Coming up to shoot here for St. FX number 14, Olivia Zip. And that is going to be stopped by Emma Connell. A very key save there from Emma Connell. It's getting wild in the press box. I'm losing my breath here. And up to bat here for Acadia now is number 12, Annie Little. And she is going to get a sure goal there. And a key finish there from Annie Little makes it 3-2. Now X leads with one shooter left apiece. And on the scoreboard here, it does read 4-3. We're just keeping track in the booth here of the shootout goals, but that also does include the 1-1 one -one during the game. And the goal score for X, their hero in the semifinal match. Here's Chloe Brennan stepping up for X. And a save there from Emma Connell for St. FX, or sorry, for Acadia on St. FX. This is becoming a dramatic shootout here. And what a save it was there from Emma Connell. Picked her, picked her spot there and made a great diving save on Friday night's hero, Chloe, Chloe Brennan. And now Acadia has a chance to tie up here in the shootout. One shooter remaining and she needs to score. And it'll be the captain, Michelle Pride, to do so. Here is Michelle Pride. If she scores, they're going to go to sudden death. Let's see what happens here for Acadia. And Pride is going to miss on top of the goal. And that means... Sane Effects is your AUS Women's Soccer Champions. Well, there you have it on your screen. Sane Effects are the winners. And you can see the emotion on their faces. Coming in as the number four seed, the Sane Effects X Woman proving once again that they can handle things with their composure on the spot. Winning again on penalties here to capture the AUS banner. The Congratulations to the St. FX X women. Congratulations as well to the Acadia Axe, Axe women. Tremendous effort from them this evening and a tough way to lose the championship on, on from the penalty spot. Absolutely. You know, it doesn't show how much determination and effort they put into the games, but that is the way soccer works, and both teams know that that is a chance that they would have to take if it is all tied up. But both teams, just an incredible effort. Definitely. Both teams, again, long matches throughout the weekend, and today was no... Today was no uh, no different. Both teams going the distance, 120 minutes of gameplay, and then to do so well from the spot, and credit to the goalkeepers on either side as well. Some key saves there to, to make the shootout down to the wire, and what a finish it was. Well, another championship, another championship in the books here. Well, here you have it on your screen, and they're just getting ready for the awards ceremony right now. They're just putting everything together, and you can see both teams. You can see, you know, the faces of both teams here, St. FX and Acadia, a very, very hard battle fought. Well, we're going to send it down to our sideline reporter who has our TV1 player of the game, Jordan Ellis. Take it away. Thanks, Raisa. Yes, the 2016 
Subway AUS Women's Championship Player of the Game, Aaron Visser, <laughs> coming in and making unbelievable saves for the penalty kicks for the win. Thank you very much. It's absolute honor to win this. Like, we weren't like expecting like from where we came from our first year to now. It's just an incredible journey. It was just amazing. I can't even speak. I'm just so excited. Walk us through those final couple minutes there. You know the score is still tied in overtime, and you know the coach is probably going to come come down and say you're going in. Well, it's actually very stressful, but you know what? You got to do what you got to do for your team, and it was absolutely like I said before. It's an honor. So I not have any other way. It was awesome. And uh, I know you, you want to enjoy the moment right now, but let's look forward to next weekend, C you know, the CIS oh, yeah, championships. Sure. All right, that's awesome. Thank you very much. All right, well, best of luck, Thanks. and uh, go have fun. Thank you. All right, back to Raisa. Thank you so much. She is so excited. She's like, Jordan, I'm done talking here. I want to be with my team. And, you know, great job on that interview. Thank you so much. And can't blame her. She's ready to look. She's ready to uh, get her championship right now. And here we go again. We look at the save here on Kinsella Noseworthy Smith. Again, Noseworthy Smith, I think, would like to have that placed a little differently. But again, another key save there from Aaron Visser and pulled her team ahead there in the shootout. And what a key save that was there for her ex women. Well, folks, it's an exciting Sunday here in Cape Breton. And two teams battling it out, working so hard all year. And soccer is really quite a quick turnaround season. It's, you know, starts kind of right when school starts, and it's pretty much done in November. So it's it's just incredible how far these teams can come in just a couple of months of practice. And look at Fraser on the screen there. You can just see the excitement in these players. Lots of emotions for both teams. And uh, you can, as you expect, the St. FXX women are, are so excited now to to capture that AUS banner and especially as a four-seeded team to to come in and, and upset some some great teams and uh, they're, they're showing their character they're showing how good this team is and they're looking forward to the national championship next weekend all right well I'm going to send it down to our sideline reporter who is grabbing another ex-player to talk take it away thank you Racy. yes Kelsey Ellis a big goal there in the first half walk us through that goal honestly just indescribable feeling after scoring that so happy to have been, been here, had the opportunity. Can't say much else. It must be an emotional roller coaster being in this game, going to penalty kicks for the second straight game. Oh, yes. My heart can't take much more. <laughs> and looking forward to next week already? Yes. Well, very excited. All right, well, congratulations. Thank you, you very much. Her. All right, back to Raisa for the championships. All right, thank you very much. And we are going to turn it to the in-house PA, and they are going to do the championship awards ceremony so thank you so much for sticking with us and and just keep listening because we're going to have the ceremony coming right up here all right ladies and gentlemen please welcome mr kirk mccray from Subway Local Franchise to present today's Subway Player of the Game Awards. First off, from Acadia, number 23, Katie Ross. And a nice round of applause for Katie, ladies and gentlemen, a hard fought match in the championship today. From St. of X, number 18, Kelsey Ellis. Next up, please welcome. Mr. Phil Curry, Executive Director for Atlantic University Sports, to present today's major awards. Next, we were presenting the Tournament Most Valuable Player Award. The Most Valuable Player from the 2016 Subway AUS Women's Soccer Championship is from the St. of X, X Women, 
Number 31, Nicole McDonald. At this time, we would now ask for the captains of the Saint of X, X women to please come forward for the presentation of the AUS Women's Soccer Championship Banner and Trophy. Want to congratulations to the Saint of X X Women 2016 AUS Women's Soccer Champions. The Saint of X X Women and the Acadia X Women will both represent the AUS Conference at the 2016 U Sports Women's Soccer Championship, being hosted next weekend by Acadia University. Want to congratulations to the Saint of X X Women on their championship. Well, folks, there you have it back on your screen. Check out the St. FX X Women. They are your AUS Women's Champions this year, 2016 champions. And look how excited they are. What an incredible championship weekend it has been here. A lot of overtime. But you know what? It didn't even matter because it got us to this moment and some really hard fought battles. And what a dramatic weekend it was. So many matches going to extra time and so many crucial matches decided by the shootout. Congratulations again to the Saint FXX women. So deserving of this title now. And again, as I mentioned, we'll look forward next weekend to to be heading to Wolfville to participate in the Youth Sports Championship. Okay. Congratulations to Graham Kennedy and his coaching staff on a tremendous effort, not only this weekend, but all season as well. I know the time that, that the coaching staff must take with, with his players, not only during the season but off season as well making sure that all is up to point and uh, just congratulations there to Graham and, and the rest of the staff and great for him to be able to make it to this championship of course an unlucky loss there for the St. FX men's team and incredible that a coach coaches both of the soccer teams I think that in itself is just miraculous but great that he could come here and, and be with the team after they worked so hard to get into the finals And you see the players meeting with likely their family and, and other friends there and such a great moment for them to share with uh, with their family. Under the Sunday night lights. Well, it sounds like we are going to hear from the man himself, head coach Graham Kennedy. Jordan, why don't you take it away? Coach of the St. FX X women's soccer team. <laughs> Obviously an unbelievable emotion. Yeah, it's a great day for us. Um, it, we, we, we did really well for a good part of that game, 65, 70 minutes. And, and then, you know, we lost our way a little bit to Acadia, their press. They've got a great press and they really came after us. And, and you know, and we started, our, our fatigue started to show and, and, uh, and they scored. And I thought, are we going to, are we, are, are we going to be able to keep it together? Are we going to come back from that? And uh, we stuck it out through overtime. And uh, I knew if we could get it to penalty kicks with Aaron Visser, uh, in goal that we've got a really good chance of uh, winning in PK. So, yeah, that's what happened. All right, you're in your fourth season as head coach of the X Women. Have you? Would you imagine in four years' time you'd be AUS champions? 
Uh, I thought thought that we could do well within four years. Um, and as a matter of fact, our goal was to be champions in four years. I mean, you don't go around broadcasting that to everybody, but but everybody's trying to do that. I mean, we got a whole lot of really good coaches in our league, and everybody's trying to do good work, and and we're all doing our very very best. And and you know, I feel bad that some team had to lose today. You know, and it's about the girl who took the final kick as a kid I used to coach. You know, and one of the finest players I know, Michelle Pride, and so. Uh, it's 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 heart wrenching and yet it's it's bittersweet and you know sweet for us and, and bitter for them unfortunately and uh, but that's soccer and next week we go to the CIS tournament and the whole thing could turn around and go the other way but that's that's just the game. All right, well thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Jordan. Well, some incredible words there from a coach. You know, very humbled at his win. Still incredibly proud of his team but just nice even knowing you know it's such a small community here he knows michelle pride and did coach her so a big shout out to coach kennedy for those kind words all right folks well here we have it we are going to wrap up here with your all-stars your women's soccer first team all-stars keeper tessa ritchie from mount a defenders emily nickerson from acadia robin Novoroski, cbu Haley gates from unb in the midfield Alyssa armstrong cbu hannah rivkin munn mercy miles from st fx michelle pride from acadia and strikers jesse no noseworthy from munn kinsella noseworthy smith from acadia and striker chelsea curry from cbu we have our women's soccer second team all-stars. Keeper Sammy Jo Bell from UNB. Defenders Keisha Young-Munn, Amanda Bowles-Dal, Laura McNicholas, UNB, and Candace Conrad from Acadia. In the midfield, Tamara Brown from CBU. Alex Brush from St. FX. Lauren Cubbin from UNB. And strikers Jane Pope from Munn. Alexandra Malte from UDM. And Chloe Brennan from St. FX. And finally, your women's major award winners for women's soccer, MVP Jesse Noseworthy from the Memorial Seahawks, Rookie of the Year Nicole Toraville from the Seahawks, the Student Athlete Community Service Award Scarlett Smith from the Dal Tigers, and Coach of the Year Mike Power from the Seahawks. So the Seahawks really sweeping up those major award winners. Well, here is one last look for you all. Thank you so much for joining us for the AUS Subway AUS Women's Soccer Championships. There are your winners on the screen, St. FX. We are so happy that we were here to broadcast this for you. My name is Raisa Lalani. I had your call for the weekend, joined but with Justin McLellan on color commentary, and down on the sidelines was Jordan Ellis. Thanks so much for joining us. Having a wonderful night. <laughs>